Welcome to the online church. I welcome all of you from all the nations around the world and those that are live with us now and those that are listening on, on the archives. Welcome. Welcome to the online church in Jesus' name. My name is Terry Chiquito. I will be bringing you the message today. Pastor Leroy Carter and his wife Jackie have gone to Augusta, Georgia to celebrate the 70th wedding anniversary of Jackie's parents. Congratulations to them and have a wonderful time, Pastor Carter and Jackie. God bless you both. Uh, today's message is titled Strongholds, Inner Healing, and Deliverance. And the scriptures that I will be reading from today are Luke 4.18, Matthew 12.20, Hebrews 4.12, and Luke 10.19. So thank you again for all joining, for all of you for joining us today and for fellowshipping and worshiping with us. We thank, I thank God for each and every one of you, all here and all around the world as we worship the living God in spirit and in truth. At this time, I'd like for each and every one of you to uh, type in a name in the chat room that you would like prayer for, or if you can't get to the chat, room, uh, the chat window, call out the names of your loved ones that you would like for us to pray for and bring before the throne of God. Um, Jackie typed in the name of her husband, Russell, and her son. And Wes has typed in uh, friends, family, and co-workers. And I typed in Pastor Paul Begley. He's been fighting uh, an upper respiratory infection, an ear infection, and sensitivity to his eye. So let's bring our loved ones to the throne of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our loved ones to you. Father, we come boldly before your throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Father, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity. Lord, we lift up our loved ones before you and ask for your healing. Stretch forth your mighty hand, O God, and let signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We bind and rebuke every form of sickness and disease in the authority of Jesus Christ. In the authority that Jesus Christ has given to us. And we command healing. Father, thank you for the healing that will certainly come in Jesus' name. To you be the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And let the church say, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, and remember, as the healings come, uh, to share them with us, um, to build up the faith of the brethren, and, and to give God the glory when we acknowledge what he has done, God gets the glory. So remember to send in your praise reports. Thank you, Lord. Um, I'm going to read the scriptures, Luke 4.18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Matthew 12:20, A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. I also like the, the, uh, the way the living translation reads in uh, Matthew 12:20, And it says, he will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. I love that. And Luke 10:19, Behold, I give unto you authority 
to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord always blesses the reading of his word. Um, Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word with the people. Thank you, Lord, for your living word. That by the power of your word, demons are cast out, broken hearts are healed, and the captives are set free. Father, we praise you, we love you, we thank you. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And before I start my message on which is titled Strongholds, Inner Healing, and Deliverance, I want to give credit where credit's due. Uh, the message on strongholds is from Anita Fuentes, and the message on inner healing and deliverance is by Scott Bitcon. They are not my messages. I am resharing them with you. And I pray that you are blessed and encouraged and edified through this message today. So let's begin. What is a stronghold? Now, some of you may have already taken the course um, War in the Spirit with Pastor Carter in the Paul Begley School, Paul Begley School of Prophecy, online school of prophecy. Um, great. If you did, awesome. It's a wonderful course. If you haven't taken it, I highly recommend it. It is wonderful, and you will be blessed by it greatly. So those that already know what a stronghold is, I pray that this will sharpen your sword even further. And those that don't know, you're about to find out. Hallelujah. So what is a stronghold? A stronghold is a place that has been fortified to protect itself against attack. There are two types of strongholds. There is a uh, holy stronghold, which we find in Psalms 18, 1 through 3, and then uh, an unholy stronghold, which we find in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. So how are strongholds built? A stronghold, an unholy, I want to make sure I emphasize that, an unholy stronghold is built when we unwittingly receive, accept error, uh, falsehood, lies, and then we meditate on them. Some are put there by ourselves. Some are put there by others. All are there by disobedience to God on part of some person. How are strong, unholy strongholds built? By our wounded soul. Um, the enemy, when a person's wounded, the enemy will come and whisper into their ear, put up walls and protect yourself from ever being wounded again. Uh, the enemy tells that person that's been wounded that these walls will protect them when really all it will do is keep them from being healed and delivered. Um, how are strongholds built? Unholy strongholds built? God's help is rejected. When um, uh, a person is wounded, God will always send help. He will always send a person, someone, to help that person. And it's up to that person to receive and want the help of Jesus Christ. And if they reject God's help, then Satan is invited in. And Satan comes in and immediately begins laying that foundation of deception and starts putting up those walls of self-protection. Uh, an unholy stronghold is built by hurt and trauma. Uh, an unholy stronghold is built when the wounded soul indulges in sinful thinking patterns. And an unholy stronghold is built when the wounded soul engages in sinful behavior. And the unholy stronghold is built when the one that has been wounded defends their right to simple thinking and simple behavior. Demons are drawn to strongholds, unholy strongholds. So how are strongholds strength? So now we know what a stronghold is 
and now we know how a stronghold is built, an unholy stronghold. How are unholy, unholy strongholds strengthened? An unholy stronghold is strengthened by emotional outbursts. The person that's been wounded and has this unholy stronghold in them, they get angry and they just let it rip. They just have no self-control. They have these emotional outbursts. Um, an unholy stronghold is strengthened when the wounded person has these mental arguments, they'll be thinking in their head like, well, I know I need to forgive that person, but I'm not going to forget. And so, you know, um, or maybe I'll forgive or maybe I won't forget, you know, maybe I will forgive, maybe I won't. They argue in their own head about, about this situation that took place with that person, another person. Uh, an unholy stronghold is strengthened by past failures. They're constantly remembering what happened to them in the past. They rehash it, rehash it, rehash it, and that only strengthens that unholy stronghold. Um, an unholy stronghold is strengthened by personal attacks. They are The one that's been wounded tends, is defensive and angry. An unholy stronghold is strengthened by rationalizing their behavior they will rationalize it saying well this was done for done to me so that makes it right for me to be able to do this they rationalize their behavior and an unholy stronghold is strengthened uh, when the one that's been wounded will change the subject a person may bring it up to them and they will say I don't want to deal with it I don't want to talk about it and then they just change the subject that just makes it more strengthened it just strengthens the the stronghold even more and then finally what strengthens an un, how are strong, unholy strongholds strengthened peer comparison the one that's wounded will say yeah okay um okay what i did was bad but margaret over there look what she did she's way worse so they compare themselves and that just strengthens that stronghold even more um, the characteristics of a stronghold, it exists in the person's mind. The one that's been wounded, it exists in their mind. The uh, unholy stronghold is hidden from, from their awareness. They don't even know they have it. Uh, another characteristic of an unholy stronghold is it's been there a while. No fortress is built overnight. It's been there for some time. It's been being built in some time for some time. And another characteristic of an unholy stronghold is the stronghold has a, has tempted the person to sin repeatedly. And another characteristic of an unholy stronghold is the stronghold repeatedly over the overpowers the person, creating hopelessness. They're doing something that they may not necessarily want to do, but they don't they can't get the victory over it, and they keep doing it, and they keep doing it, and they keep doing it, and it creates hopelessness. And another characteristic of an unholy stronghold is it is actively and aggressively opposed to God in his truth. And another characteristic of an unholy stronghold um, it has many intellectual and emotional defenses. Only God can break an unholy stronghold. If God is not involved in the person's life with the stronghold, that person will remain in that unholy stronghold until that stronghold finally overpowers them to death. I'm going to read that again. If God is not involved in the person's life, with the stronghold, that person will remain in an unholy stronghold until that stronghold finally overpowers them to death or they give their life to Jesus Christ. The purpose of an unholy stronghold is to lead that person to death. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his only purpose. And that's the purpose of a stronghold, to steal, kill, and destroy. 
Um, it is up to the person that has been wounded if they want to be delivered, if they want the help of Jesus Christ. So how are strongholds destroyed? Only God can break a stronghold. And the first thing you must do in order for a stronghold to be destroyed is you first must admit that you've been wounded. If you're not willing to admit then you're, that you've been wounded, then, then healing can't come because you first have to admit and say, okay, I was wounded, I was hurt, and I need that wound healed. So that's the step number one is you need to admit, yeah, I was wounded, I was hurt. And secondly, you must fully, fully surrender unto God. Um, what are the effects? Oh, okay, yeah, so in order for that stronghold to be destroyed, you need to admit you were wounded, and then you need to go to Jesus Christ and fully, wholly surrender, surrender you, your life to him. And now I want to, so those, that's what a stronghold is, and how they're built, how they're strengthened, what the characteristics are, and how it's torn down. And so now I want to move into inner healing. What is inner healing? Inner healing is using prayer and the word of God to heal the deepest wounds of our souls. Wounds caused by trauma and abuse. Anything that is too much for us to cope with. And most of these happened when we were kids. Deliverance is casting out demons by invoking the name and authority of Jesus Christ. Demons don't have to leave until all those wounds have been healed. And God will reveal wounds to us in two ways. Number one, God allows people to trigger you. What's a trigger? A trigger is a big emotion, a big reaction over something small. Something little happens and you just have this over-the-top reaction. That is a trigger. That is the Holy Spirit saying, ding, 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 you've got a wound. And he wants to heal it. He's shown it to you. And then uh, the second way that God will trigger you is he will bring memories into your mind. You could be sitting on the couch just quietly quietly resting, and then all of a sudden this memory will uh, pop into your mind. That is the Holy Spirit showing you that there is a wound that needs to be healed. So... What are the effects of wounds? The effects of wounds, number one, is depression. Number two, self-harm. Number three, emotional overreaction. Four, lost time. Lost time is they can lose a couple minutes of time. They can lose a couple hours, an hour, a couple hours. They can lose a couple days. They can lose a week. They can lose a month. They can lose years of time. Uh, lost the time. And five, uh, the effects of a wound is the one that's been wounded will have trouble praying and reading the Bible. And examples from the Bible of wounded souls would be the demoniac and the woman at the well. So the trauma, the hurt, and the, sorry, the trauma, the hurt, the wound is an entry point for demons to come in. As soon as a wound is created, as soon as a heart is broken, immediately demons will come in and get on that wound. And that wound is their legal right to stay there. And they have that legal right to stay until that wound is healed. And so if, so if you're wounded, you get a wound, demons come in and they get on that wound. And then, you, you know, a week, two later, how much time later, you get another wound. Well, then here comes more demons, and they get on that wound. And and every time a wound happens, demons come in and get on that wound. So you can see how easily a person could, like that demoniac in the Bible, 
how how some say he had 2,000 and some say he had up to 6,000 demons. How many wounds did that man have? And and how, you know, wow. So that, that's how they come in there like that. Um, so how do we receive inner healing? So we know what inner healing is, we know what deliverance is, we know what triggers are, we know the effects of wounds. So how do we receive inner healing? We need to ask the Holy Spirit. Go to the Holy Spirit, ask him to bring into your mind memories that he wants to heal. And he will bring memories into your mind and, and what he shows you um, the memory, that's what you take before the Lord. And the emotion is the legal right for the demon to stay. Heal the wound, the demons must leave in the name of Jesus. So, how to receive inner healing? We go before the Lord and we say, in the name of Jesus, I divide soul and spirit and I lay aside the spirit. Now, what's happening here with this with this word is I divide soul and spirit. You're not dividing your spirit. You're dividing you're dividing the spirit that's on the wound. When you say I divide soul and spirit, the spirit on the the wound immediately comes off and you lay it aside. So you're not dealing with the spirit. You're dealing with the wound. So I divide soul and spirit. I lay aside the spirit. Now you tell Jesus the memory that he brought to your mind. If you were six year old, you tell Jesus, when I was six years old, and then you tell him the memory. What happened to you at that memory that he brought to your mind? So say you were being babysat, and the babysitter beat you, mistreated you, and you were fearful and afraid. And so um, you would describe that to Jesus. And as you're describing it to Jesus, you allow those emotions to come up. You allow that fear to come up. You allow the tears to come down. And at the worst of it, at the very worst of it, at that moment, what is the, what is the emotion that you're feeling? Are you feeling fear? Are you feeling pain, terror? What is it? And then say, Lord Jesus, come. And Jesus will immediately come. He takes that emotion away. So if you were feeling fear, he will immediately take that emotion away. If you were feeling um, um, terror, he will take it away. And then you ask Jesus, Jesus, and then you calm down. It will, you, you calm right back down, and, and he brings you back into peace. And you ask him, Lord, what do you have to say to me about fear or terror? or re rejection, whatever it was you were feeling. And then the Lord Jesus Christ will speak a word to you. If you were feeling fear, he might say, I haven't given you the spirit of fear. If you were feeling rejected, he might say to you, um, I've chosen you. You are mine. He will speak that word, that word to you. And instantly, that wound is healed. It is completely healed. And then at this point, you would tell Jesus, Lord Jesus, I break the, in the name of Jesus, I break the curse of fear. I, in Jesus' name, break the curse of rejection. In Jesus' name, I break the curse of terror. All the way back to Adam and Eve. And that curse is broken off your life. It's done in Jesus' name. And then the person that caused that wound, you tell Jesus, Lord, I forgive so-and-so for hurting me, I forgive them. I forgive them, I release them, and I let them go. And that 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 brings forgiving that person brings you know it's you just it's a release. Let them go. And then um the deliverance comes when because now you've now you've been healed, the wound is healed, that curse is broken off your life, but you still have those demons on in that in there on the on your heart so now to receive the deliverance you would say in the name of jesus i bind and i rebuke the demon of fear 
or terror or rejection or whatever it was that you were feeling, that emotion that you were feeling, I bind the demon of fear and I command that demon to go back into the pit in Jesus' name and never return again so that he's gone. He has to go in the name of Jesus. He's gone. He leaves. He no longer has a legal right to stay there, and he has to go. And there's nothing you have to fear about a demon. Um, they have no power over us. The Lord has given us authority in Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You don't have to worry about them hurting you. They've been defeated. They've been disarmed. And they have no power over you. And in the and in, at the name of Jesus, they have to go. And they go in Jesus' name. And then there is a little test that you can do to make sure that that wound was healed. You can go back and sit before the Lord and um, replay that memory that he brought to your mind. Tell it the same exact way. When I was six years old, uh, this babysitter did this, 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 and I was experiencing such fear and whatever it was. And as you're telling it to Jesus, there should be no fear. There should be no tears. There should be no emotion. So when, when, when you speak it and there's no tears, there's no emotion, that's telling you it's healed. It's healed. Jesus took that away. He took that emotion away, and it's healed. And um, the memory will still be there, but the pain, the fear, the rejection is now gone. It's healed. And then um, if you have other wounds, the Holy Spirit will reveal those to you, and you do the same steps over and over. Ask him to bring the memories back to your mind that he would like to heal today you take that memory to the lord and you tell it back to him i divide soul and spirit i lay aside the spirit you tell it back to jesus at the worst moment what was that emotion and 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 then say jesus come jesus comes he takes that emotion and then you ask him uh what does he have to say about that emotion and jesus will speak a word to you and then that is healed. And then you do the same thing. You break that curse. You forgive the person. And then you name the demon, fear, whatever it was. And you bind them in Jesus' name and send them back to the pit. And you do that with every single wound. And, and, and they go at the name of Jesus. And, and you're healed. It's incredible. Jesus is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Lord, we give you praise. I worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And there's also another test that you can do for those that are experiencing pain, a, a pain in your body. Um, you can do a quick test to see if that pain that you are feeling is actually physical or spiritual. So what you would say is, I command the spirit of pain, pressure, burning, whatever you're feeling, um, whatever you're feeling. If you're feeling burning, I command that spirit of burning to go down. In Jesus name and then wait a moment if that pain goes down if it gets better then you know it's a spirit and you have a wound and you need to be healed and then you would go to the Lord and do that same process over and over again so it's pretty amazing it's pretty awesome God is glorious and magnificent he doesn't want any of us to walk around with wounds in our heart he came to set the captives free. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to 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 bind up our broken hearts, uh, to heal our broken hearts, and to bind up our every wound. So let him. Amen. And uh, so that was the word I wanted to bring forth to you on strongholds, on inner healing, and deliverance. Now this might not be for you that you can use on yourself personally. Um, but really it is for everybody because even now at uh, even older we can get a wound so when we do experience a wound someone hurt us go immediately to the Lord and tell him that wound tell him the emotion and let him heal it 
so that Satan can't get a foothold on you and start putting in that the uh, unholy stronghold. Um, so so yeah, it really is for everybody. But those with children, you know, we send them to school and they have friends. They can be easily wounded. So we need to be paying attention if they're showing any signs that we know what's going on and we can help them uh, go before the Lord and be healed. And uh, our friends, our family, our neighbors, our coworkers, people on the street, those that are out street preaching and those have street ministries, you can take it to the streets. And, and these dear precious souls that are being held captive can be healed and delivered and set free. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I pray that you have been blessed and your sword is sharpened and and that the Lord will use you mightily to, to set the captives free whom he leads you to set free. And if you would allow me the privilege, I would like to share my testimony with you. Some of you on my Facebook page may have already read it. Uh, um, I pray that it will bless you again. And, and those that never heard it, I pray that it will build you up and strengthen you. Everybody that hears it, I pray that it will build up your faith and strengthen you and edify you, refresh you, and, and, and encourage you. So, number one, all glory to God. All the glory to God. So, in 1993... We moved from one town to another. We experienced a very difficult situation in our lives, and we moved away from that one town and started over in a new town. And in this new town, I had three children. Oh, I had three children then, but I, in this new town, I was sending my children to, to Sunday school and church, and uh, I did not go with them. I thought it was good for them, but it wasn't good for me. They needed it. I didn't. So I sent my three children. They were 14. 13 and 10 at the time, and I was 33 at the time. Um, they would go to church, and then they would come home and tell me how much they enjoyed it. They enjoyed the message. They enjoyed the music. And then they started to invite me. And so I was like, yeah, all right, all right, I'll go. So I started attending church with them. And then when I was in church, I heard the truth that, that I was a sinner. And then I was going to hell if I didn't repent. I got afraid. I got scared. I was like, whoop. I knew I was a sinner. I knew I had done wrong. I didn't need anybody to point it out. I knew it. And I had become afraid. I was fearful. And I was like, I don't want to go to hell. So I asked the pastor to come over and speak to us. And and um, I decided to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ at that time. And my children also. But... When my children wanted to, I was against it. I was like, no, I don't want my children to do this because I think they're only doing it because I'm doing it, and I don't want them to do that. I want it to be real to them. And the pastor said to me, Jesus said not to stop the children from coming to him. So when he said that, I was like, okay. So I, we all, myself, my husband at the time, and, and my three children received the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, on November 21 of uh, 1993, we were baptized, and, and our lives started to change. Um, the Lord delivered me. I had two eating disorders. I suffered from bulimia and anorexia, and uh, I smoked, and the Lord delivered me from the eating disorders and from smoking. We attended church, um, Bible studies, Awana, and I even began to teach Sunday school. And then after a few years, we started um, having a lot of difficulty. And when I came to the Lord at 33, I knew nothing of God. I knew there was a God. I knew there were angels. I knew there was a devil. And that was pretty much all I knew. I was a blank slate. And so I didn't know anything about spiritual warfare. I didn't know my identity in Christ. I didn't know any of that blank so we started having a lot of difficulties, and I didn't handle it well, and I didn't, I didn't go to the Lord and ask him for help. What I did was I threw up my hands in anger, and I said, I'm done. I was angry at the situation and people, and I was angry at God. I took it out on God, and I walked away from God. 
And uh, then when I walked away, my life just literally spiraled uncontrollable, out of control, in a downward spiral. Spiral. Um, my husband and I had filed for a bankruptcy. We started having marriage problems and ended up in divorce. I went back to work, and at work I suffered a severe back injury. And uh, uh, about a year later after the injury, I had surgery. They had to put a rod in my back to stabilize my back. And I didn't get better. I got worse. I got worse. Way worse. The pain was out of control. So they put in what's called an internal uh, neuro stimulator. So I have that rod in my lower back. Then I have a plate in my upper back. And I have a, a, an internal stimulator unit in my stomach. And what that stimulator does is it sends down um, vibrations down down into the area where I had pain. Uh, my legs and my feet were just horrible with pain. And it would send these vibrations down my leg trying to cover the pain. And um, the first one worked pretty good for me, and I wore it out in just a couple of years. And then they, I had to go in and have that removed and have a, a, a new stimulator put in. And I never did like that, the second stimulator after that. But anyway, so, um, yeah, they stabilized my back. My back was fixed, but I continued to worsen because it wasn't physical. It was spiritual. I had walked away from God, and that can't be fixed, but only by God. No pill, no man, no doctor can fix that. Only the great physician, Jesus Christ, can fix that. So um, the doctors couldn't do anything more with me. So what they did was they just loaded me up on narcotics. I was on major, major narcotics. I was on very high doses. And even on these really, really high doses of narcotics, um, this, the pain was still out of control. And, and it was very, very difficult. So I had horrific pain. I was depressed and angry. So these should start to sound a little familiar to you after we just learned about the stronghold and um, uh, um, the effects of a, a stronghold. Remember, uh, one of them was depressed. Another one was angry. So here I am. I'm in horrific pain. I'm depressed, and I'm angry. So after a few years, I remarried. And three or four years into the marriage, we were having marriage problems. And it was looking like divorce would happen. And I didn't want to go through another divorce. I, I just didn't want to deal with it. So I took my narcotics. I had a quick-acting Oxycontin and a slow-acting, I think it was Oxycodone, I'm not sure. And uh, I took the two pills and uh, mixed them together. I took a handful of them and I swallowed them. I didn't want to go through another divorce. I thought killing myself was the answer. And so I swallowed those pills. And uh, I was brought to the emergency room. And while I was in the emergency room, all those pills in me, I had to drink that charcoal stuff. It was really gross. But uh, uh, to try to counteract the, uh, all the meds in me. And while I was in the uh, emergency room, a nurse came in. I was having trouble breathing. And a nurse came in, and she gave me a shot because I had so many pills in me, I was just, Sky high. I was sky high. And the shot that she was giving me was bringing me down out of that high. And when she started to put that shot into my IV and I could feel the effect of it right away, it felt like a hand from the depths of hell had reached up from out of the depths of hell, reached up through my bed and grabbed me by my back and was pulling me down through the bed and going to pull me down into hell. It literally felt like I was being pulled down into hell. And I started yelling out that nurse, stop, stop. I just felt like if she had injected all that shot into me, I was going to hell. I would be brought down to hell and there wasn't going to be any way getting out. And so I was yelling at her, stop, stop, stop. And she immediately stopped. And she said to me, are you refusing this injection? And I said, yes. 
yes, I'm refusing it. I didn't tell her what was going on, but yeah, I refused it. I didn't want it. And so, um, so after that, um, they got me stabilized. They sent me to a psych ward, and I was in the psych ward for three days, and then after that, I went home. And when I was well enough, I, I left my husband. I walked out on my husband and um, left him for a few months, and then we got back together. Shortly after we got back together, I suffered a hemorrhagic stroke. I had a vein in my right frontal brain burst and bled out in my brain. And uh, uh, again, um, and I, I had lost all short-term memory, and uh, I just, my eyes were extremely sensitive to light. And again, I was just getting worse and worse and worse. And um, so I was on heavy med. I was in terrible pain, and I had no memory. And about this time, I put on 80 pounds because I couldn't function. I just laid around most of the day. I couldn't function. I was in chronic kidney failure. My skin had turned yellow, and my kidneys were not functioning as they should. And uh, I suffered with severe, severe sleep apnea. The doctor that I was seeing said I was one of the worst cases he had ever seen. And I and and uh, there was uh, times where I'd be sitting on the couch, and I didn't. I hardly ever slept. I slept maybe two or three hours in a night. And uh, so I'd be sitting on the couch, and at the time I was smoking, I'd be smoking a cigarette. And all of a sudden, even as I'm smoking a cigarette, I'd fall asleep and just fall over. A couple of times I hit the floor, and I thought I was going to break my neck. It was really serious. Um, so um, after this stroke and all these other things going on, we moved from the place that we were at and moved to the place where I'm at now. And um, here at this house, I started to feel the drawing of the Holy Spirit. I literally felt, I felt the spiritual drawing. I could feel the drawing of the Holy Spirit, but I felt it physically. I could feel it like a drawing in my belly, like there was like a drawn, but I could feel it in my belly. And I knew the Holy Spirit was drawing me back to him. And even though I knew the Holy Spirit was drawing me back to him, I was like, oh, I didn't know if I could be forgiven. After everything that I had done, you know, I walked away from the Lord. I went back into the world, and I did worse things than I'd ever done before. And I hadn't been to church in years. And so I thought, well, I need to talk to a pastor. So I got in my computer room. I typed in my web browser, online church. And the name that came up first was Pastor Paul Bigley. I didn't know him. didn't know who he was. I didn't know what he believed. I didn't know what he taught nothing he was number one on the list and so I clicked on him and then and then um uh there was a number there and I called the number and he was having a live radio show and I got on so I know that was the providential hand of God himself getting me on and so I'm talking to Pastor Paul and I asked him I asked him, I told him I had walked away, I had walked away from the Lord and, you know, that I'd done all these terrible things and I felt the drawing of the Holy Spirit and could I return back? Could I come back? Could I go back to the Lord? And the pastor told me, yes, if you're sorry for your sins and you repent, yes, the Lord will receive you back. So I was like, okay, that's really all I wanted to hear. And I hung up with Pastor Paul. I thanked him and hung up with Pastor Paul and I went back into my living room and so I'm pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth. You know, God was really dealing with me and I'm pacing and I'm pacing and I'm pacing. And then I finally gave in and I knelt down in my living room floor and, and re-surrendered my life to the Lord and received him as my Lord and Savior. I repented of my sins and he did forgive me and, and, and uh, I was born again at that moment. And then um, then I started to grow. I started reading in the Word, praying. I went back to Pastor Paul and started getting into uh, 
listening to him, getting in the chat room, getting to know the, the brothers and sisters, and really growing, really growing. I had no idea we were living in the last days. And so Pastor Paul uh, quickly brought me up to speed on where we were. And so, um, yeah, I was really growing and growing and growing and growing. And at this time, the Holy Spirit was working in me and convicting me because I was still smoking at this time. I was I smoked for about 30 years and the last eight years of my life I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day I just smoked and smoked and smoked so um, the Holy Spirit was convicting me about the smoking so I picked up the cigarettes and I laid them down at his feet I said Lord these hurt my witness I don't want to smoke anymore so I laid them down at his feet and I get I surrendered the smoking to him and I, I gave it to him and immediately BAM that chain was broken I never went with I never went through withdrawal I never suffered any in any way shape or form he completely broke that chain it was done over and then a little while later the Holy Spirit still working in me and convicting me so then I brought to the Lord because I was drinking and I brought to the Lord the tequila and I laid it at his feet and said Lord I don't want to drink anymore I don't want it I laid it at his feet BAM done over I've never had a I've never touched alcohol again, never. And then I had a filthy foul mouth. I even went out of my way to offend people on purpose. It was just filthy and foul. And I didn't want to talk that way anymore. And so I surrendered my mouth to the Lord. And I asked him to clean up my mouth and be the Lord of my mouth. Done. I said one curse word after that. And I have not said another curse word since. And, and, and he continually... Uh, is continue to grow me and teach me and lead me and guide me and I'm so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, so in 2015, I got into an argument with a person and it wasn't a big deal, but I had a big reaction. Remember, remember what we learned about the strongholds? Not a big deal, but I overreacted. I had this great big reaction. And I'd always dealt with anger and uh, rage. I didn't really have anger. I had rage. And that's what was happening to me. After this argument with this person, I come into my house and I was raging. I was raging. I was raging. And I didn't want to. And I was trying to make myself calm down. And I couldn't. I, no matter what I did, I couldn't make that raging stop. And so I thought, well, okay, I'm going to read my Bible and let the Word of God call me so I got my Bible out and I started to read and then all of a sudden I heard a very demonic voice not on the outside on the inside uh, speak speak I heard him speak and it was directly I mean directly against Christ and I was like whoa that was not me so then I realized okay I've got a problem I had no idea I thought my whole life that this anger this rage was me it wasn't me at all it was a demon and uh, so I knew of a man Scott Vitcon and uh, that is gifted with deliverance I called him and set up a, an appointment with him and it was a couple of days later I had a uh, a phone conference with him and I was on the phone with him two and a half hours. I went through a two and a half hour session of deliverance. And uh, I don't remember much of the deliverance at all. But while I was in the deliverance, I was in a vision just about the whole time. I was in a vision. So that's what I remember. So I'd like to tell you those, the, the, the vision that I received going through deliverance so the first scene that I saw was I'm I'm kind of like here I am now you can see me so I'm observing I'm standing in the back and I'm observing and I see myself as a six-year-old little girl standing in front of me and she has her back to me and then um, off to the right hand side in walks Jesus Jesus Christ Jesus Christ the Messiah appeared in my vision and he came in he's wearing a garment down to his foot and he came in and he took me by my right hand and when I saw Jesus I was doing this <clears throat> I, all I could do was suck air and then Scott the man that was doing the deliverance he's like what's wrong 
And I said, Jesus just walked in. And he's like, well, yeah, he always shows up. And I was like, he does? I'd never seen Jesus before. This was the first time I'd ever seen the Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege and an honor. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Jesus came in. He took me by my right hand. And we started, they started to walk. I was in a beautiful green meadow, green grass, and beautiful blue skies. That's all I seen was green grass and blue skies. I'm so sorry. My dogs are barking. Pardon me. And so... The next scene, the next scene that the Lord gave me was, I saw on the right hand side, I saw Jesus sitting on a rock and I was sitting next to him and we were kind of like angled towards each other and we were engaged, engaged in a conversation and I, I'm still in the deliverance, I'm talking with Scott Bitcon, but I'm seeing the Lord and myself and I'm not paying attention to the the man giving the deliverance. I'm wanting to be over there where Jesus is. And he's like, no, you got to come over here with me. So he had to get me back focused over on him and what he was doing. But I really wanted to be with Jesus. I wanted to be over there. But um, so he got me back on track and, the, and we kept going on in the deliverance. And so the third scene that I saw, I saw come in from my left side. And I saw a wooden boat, a fishing boat. I saw the 12 apostles in the boat. And they were like hunkered down in the boat. And they were holding on because there was a major storm that they were in. And it was raging. And Jesus, Jesus was standing in the back of the boat. He had his right hand raised up. And he said, peace, be still. And he was calming the raging storm inside of me. And at this time, um, I wasn't healed yet. Uh, I was uh, legally blind and wearing glasses. And I used to read from a really big Bible, um, those um, extra large print Bibles. They're pretty good sized Bibles. And so in the vision, I saw the last scene I saw was this great big, I mean, it was really big, a big Bible. And so I've got the Bible and I'm flipping through the Bible, flipping through the Bible and I'm flipping, I'm flipping, and then I stopped. And I, oh, and I read the, the verse that my eyes fell on. My eyes fell on, and it was 1 Timothy, I think it's 1 Timothy 1.7. Um, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And so um, then after that, the session was over, and I came out of the vision. I came out of the very heavy anointing and, and uh, came back out of the spirit and uh, um, I was talking to Scott for a few moments and then we hung up and I was wiped out I could barely function I'd been through some major spiritual warfare and I couldn't my eye I, I couldn't even open my eyes my eyes felt my eyelids felt like they were a hundred pounds I could I couldn't even hardly open my eyes and my arms I when I would try to move my arms they felt like they weighed a thousand pounds I could not function I could not move and so I laid on the couch the rest of the day and that night I went to bed early and when I woke up in the morning whoo my whole life changed I woke up I was so full of energy I hadn't had energy in years I was like bouncing off the walls I didn't know what to do with myself I hadn't experienced energy like that probably since I was a kid and uh, I was like I didn't know what to do I didn't know what to do so I I grabbed a book and it happened to be one of the books that K.D. Collins from Harvest Army wrote. And uh, it wasn't a thick book. It was maybe that big. And uh, I read it in four hours and I comprehended it. I wasn't able to read because I would begin the sentence and get to the end of the sentence and couldn't remember what I read from the beginning. And this I read the whole book in four hours and I understood it. I comprehended it and I was like, oh, I'm healed. And so I was healed. I was healed. Uh, my kidneys have been healed. I'm no longer in chronic kidney failure. My kidneys function normally. I no longer have sleep apnea. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ took off all 80 pounds and then some, and then I put a little on. And uh, um, uh, all the memory has been restored back to me, and I have absolutely no pain. All pain is gone, and I take no medicine at all none I think I was on like 11 pills at that time 
and um, I don't take anything. And what I just recently found out, because I was legally blind at that time, and I was also uh, night blinded. I had night blindness. I couldn't see in the dark at all. It was just black. I couldn't see anything. And um, after after I was delivered, gone through the, uh, one of the spirits that was in me, all as well was a spirit of infirmity. And when that went out, the Lord completely healed me. And so um, I didn't realize that he healed my eyes. And uh, I stopped wearing my glasses because they weren't doing any good to me. They didn't benefit me at all. So I, I took them off. I didn't wear my glasses for four years. And so I knew that my eyes had been healed, but I didn't know to what extent. And I could now see at night. I, it was still dark, obviously, but I could see when before I couldn't. And so I just had a recent, my first eye exam after my healing in 2015. And I had cataracts in both my eyes, and both cataracts are completely gone. So he had restored my vision and restored the cataracts, uh, uh, took away those cataracts. Thank you, Jesus. What an amazing God we serve. What an amazing God he, we serve. When he heals, he heals completely. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so that, I think, is pretty much all of it that I wanted to share with you. And um, so I, I hope you were blessed. I hope you've been edified. I hope your faith has been built up and you've been encouraged in the Lord. And, and I Thank you for allowing me to bring the word to you today, for uh, sharing my testimony, and I, and I just ask right now in the name of Jesus that he, Lord Jesus, that you would bless your people, uh, protect them, keep them, lead them, guide them, direct them, help them, Father God. If there's any father that has sickness, I ask you, Father, to send your word, oh God, and bring healing. Father, if there's wounds, I pray that they're broken hearts would be healed and every wound bound up and and lord i just ask for your protection over them that you would supply their every need and lord we thank you we bless you and we praise you and we honor you and we thank you lord jesus you are our healer and there is a balm in gilead thank you lord jesus in jesus name thank you online church i bless you have a wonderful day in the name of jesus god bless you bye-bye